and welcome to another week in my fourth grade class. Hello, if you're new to my channel, my name is Marielle Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. I am coming to you on Tuesday, December 13, 2022, but I wanted to give you a recap of yesterday since I wasn't in the classroom. It was my last day serving for the teacher of the year committee for my region and we got to observe two teachers. Our first location was at a middle and high school, so it's a mix of 6th through 11th grade, and next year they'll have 12th grade, so it'll go from 6th to 12th. And they had a beautiful setup for us. The tables were decorated beautifully by the PTSA, and they had some refreshments for us. So we observed the teacher, and then after that, we went to our second and last location, which was another elementary school, and we got to observe a fourth grade teacher. When we got there, they had a nice little lunch for us which was yummy and delicious and then we observed the fourth grade teacher she had amazing ideas and i definitely want to touch base with her later on because she's not that far from my school and i just loved everything that she was doing in her lesson and things that i saw in her classroom that was really great and that was the end of our teacher of the year committee we then had our silent vote and we selected one region finalist for our north region which then will go against the other regions for the district teacher of the year which of course then goes against all the other districts in the state of florida for the state teacher of the year and then that goes even higher for the national teacher of the year but i digress it was a really nice experience and i'm glad to be back in the classroom so being back today we had to start our fast assessment FAST stands for Florida Assessment for Student Thinking, which goes over the best standards, which are benchmarks for excellent student thinking. And this is actually the second progress monitoring that the students take this year. They first took the first one in September, and today my homeroom students tested almost the entire day for reading. Tomorrow morning, I test my other students in the morning, so I'm probably gonna have them the whole day as I did with my students today, but my homeroom is pretty much done with reading, except for two students that will do makeup assessments. If they come to school tomorrow, they can test with my other group. If not, they will test with another person that will conduct a makeup test next week. Then the students will take the math fast assessment on Thursday and Friday. So I thought I was gonna be testing longer, but I'm only testing today and tomorrow. And then it's my co-teacher that will use our laptop cart and test both classes in math. All in all, it was a really good day of testing. And then the students went to specials, which they had physical education. And we then ended the day making sure that I went over the work that I left for them so that it is complete and checking in with the students that owe me assignments. So that is all that I have for today, Tuesday, but I'll check in with you tomorrow, Wednesday. Hello everyone, I'm coming to you at the end of the day on Wednesday and I'm happy to say that pretty much all my students finished their test today, their fast reading assessment, my block two students did, except one student that needed more time. So tomorrow she'll have a little bit more time to finish the last couple questions she needs to answer, but we'll do it after she finishes testing math and has a nice little break. So my room, as you can tell, is still in testing mode and I was going to rearrange it, but then I got distracted with some data that was sent to us so that I can review it. And also with some emails that I had to send out and also looking at the results of the test that both classes took yesterday and today, just to see how much they have grown from the first test in September until now. And I'm happy to see a lot of the progress that the students have been making. Really proud of them. So right now I'm actually gonna eat my lunch slash dinner because for lunch I only had some pretzels and some cheese and uh, applesauce <laughs> and i ordered some panera to eat right now because i stayed in school because tonight my students along with other students are performing in the elementary holiday concert so i wanted to be there to support them and also take a couple of clips here and there for the music teacher that asked me to record parts of the program so yeah, I got a warm bowl from Panera. Let me show you real quick. So this is the Baja bowl, which I love. And I got that along with an apple and a mitten cookie, which is actually a shortbread cookie with icing on it. But I love Panera's shortbread cookies. They're so yummy. So that's my little treat for today. All in all, it has been a really good day. I'm happy to go back to some sense of normalcy tomorrow even though I will have most of the students just complete the work that they owe me from the days that I wasn't here and they haven't fully finished. And some of the assignments that I left them, I'm gonna give them some guidance so that they can complete them. 
and then I can record their grades because I want to make sure that I have all the grades in before we go on winter break. Next week, we're still in school for four days, and then winter break starts on the 23rd. All right, so let me go ahead and enjoy my lunch slash dinner and then see the kids perform at the holiday concert. It's now the end of the day on Thursday and my Minecraft club just finished. So we had a lot of fun with my other group. I had my block two group all day today and we basically were working on one of the passages or packets that I left for them when I wasn't here and I try to make it fun and exciting for them. So let me show you what we were working with. This is the packet that I put together with some texts that were from their book, but because I didn't know if the students were gonna have access to their books, I just put images of the passages in this packet. And this is the directions for the passage and the spade strategy, as well as the checklist that the students have to finish. Then before we read the passages, students were surveying the text, looking for the text features that they found to give them clues about what the text is gonna be about and then of course forming their predictions. Then we went ahead and started doing the activities for reading the passages and learning about these five different Florida Everglades mammals. And the second passage was about the armadillo by itself. And this is exactly how we went over this information in the passage. So because there were five animals and I could easily break up my students into five groups, I went ahead and had students get into groups of four and choose one of these animals to write the details that talked about the animals from the passage. So I made each poster with the title and the little drawing, and this is what the students ended up writing. The armadillo one we did together at the end, but first they were working with the marsh rabbit, the gray fox, the white-tailed deer, which I know <laughs> my deer looks a little funky the manatee and the information that they wrote about the manatee and the Florida panther. So the students were working on that as a group, taking turns, writing down the information that they found in the passage about each animal. And then after that, I went ahead and had the students go back to their poster and start turning around in one minute intervals with their marker again for the color that they chose for their poster and put a check on the fact that they found most interesting about that animal, which is why you see the checks on different kinds of information for each animal. Now, after that, I went back and I went over which had the most checks, and we talked about that, and I pointed those out because the students are going to be choosing one of these five animals to compare to the armadillo. Now, we didn't get to that today, so we'll probably get to it next week because I may not see that group tomorrow since they're probably going to be testing for the fast math assessment. So you can see here all the information that we wrote about the armadillos and how easily doing this activity can help the students then look at the poster, choose the animal that they wanna to compare to the armadillo and complete the compare and contrast graphic organizer. Now that graphic organizer is gonna be important because eventually they're going to create their own podcast. And I'm gonna use Flipgrid, but it's actually called Flip. So I'm gonna take time next week to have the students record themselves using our laptops on Flipgrid and I told them don't worry if you don't want to record your face you can just pixelate it or just don't show your face at all and just have the microphone icon showing but your Flipgrid or Flip is not going to be longer than two or three minutes because they're going to share how the animal they chose is similar and different to the armadillo. It's a fun activity. I think that they're going to have a lot of fun. I kind of explained it to them today and they were very excited. So I'm looking forward to doing that with them. I didn't get to see my block one because they were testing the entire day, but I will see them tomorrow and we'll do this similar activity with them, along with giving them time to finish the assignments that they still need to finish. So that is all that I have to share for you or for today. <laughs> I will see you tomorrow. Hello friends, we have officially made it to the end of the day on Friday, just finished the dismissal, and it was kind of like a wacky Friday for sure. My fellow co-teacher actually was really, really sick. She started feeling really sick yesterday. I told her, hey, if you need to take a day, take a day because it's important that we take care of our health. And she was worried about the testing that she was supposed to do today, but guess what? We haven't had internet since early this morning. So yeah, a lot of teachers were trying to teach without the internet. Some of us have gotten so used to using the internet that we were like, what do we do now? 
but I had been working on the packets that I had left for the students so that they can work on it and do it completely. So that's what I did with my homeroom this morning. But I also had the task of splitting up her group into three different teachers because two teachers were supposed to test. But then after lunch, since we didn't have internet and they had to postpone testing, I ended up splitting my homeroom in the afternoon into five different teachers. And I got my co-teacher's homeroom this afternoon, which is my block two. And we just continue with the assignment that we were working on yesterday. But this morning with my homeroom class, finally, after I got everything sorted with the other group, got them split up, got their assignments printed out, and that was also a mission without internet, trying to figure out how to print things that I needed to access through the internet. I managed to access it on my phone and wirelessly print it from my phone to my color laser printer, which is very, very slow. But I got that all taken care of. And once I was ready to teach, I did the same activity that I did yesterday with block two with my block one, which is my homeroom. And the students got themselves into groups and they started adding the details for each animal that their group chose to focus on. So I had them do that and they didn't quite finish. So on Monday, I'm gonna give them time to make sure that they do finish that part and then complete the compare and contrast graphic organizer and hopefully eventually go to the podcast area to write out their podcast and sometime next week finding time for the students to start filming their flip grid once they have their script on what they're going to say for the podcast so very exciting uh, for my afternoon class i put their posters back up with my other posters that i put up so as you can see they're all here and there's the deer, the manatees over there, and the Florida panther is there. Now, after specials, the students I know were like tired because it's been, like I said, a really weird day. And my afternoon class had been split up and then they were with me all together in the afternoon. So I said, you know, guys, let's finish up this little bit and then we can go outside and play. And then we finished up a little bit. I'm like, you know what? Let's have a little drawing activity before we go outside. So I did a little guided drawing. I just did something freestyle, and this is what I guided them to draw. It's a little snowman scene, and he's reaching for a snowflake. And I know snowflakes, I went over it with the students. Snowflakes have six sides, so at first I did with the X and the line in the middle, but then I did the <laughs> horizontal line there, and I told them you could do it like that, or you can just do it six-sided. But I first started with the part, this part of the hat, I guided them through the hat, I guided them through this oval, then the carrot, and then the students started seeing what we were making, because I didn't tell them what we were making. I just started guiding them step by step until we pretty much got our little scene here. And then of course I told them to take it home and they can color it and do whatever they would like and finish it up if they didn't finish, but it was really, really cute. And then after that, we went outside for recess and they had a lot of great fun and time. So that is the end of my day Friday wacky friday for sure but i'm so excited for the weekend and yeah i hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this week week 17 if you did don't forget to hit the like button leave a comment down below let me know what you thought or your questions you may have also if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos i hope you have a beautiful magical day and don't forget to smile Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.